what you're looking at. Nothing. What's that for? For nothing. Next time you want to look at me, line forms to the right. Two bits admission. Oh, Munt, what do you want us to do? Walk around you with blinkers on? I don't want guys looking at me. Special. Like it was the first time they seen me. You see this? Yeah, but I got one, too. Anytime you want to use it, my office is in the gutter. And next time you take a special look at me, think of this. Suddenly you don't see Monk. You see stars. Uh, you push this off for a while. Copper? No. It's cold out there. Then stay in here. If it's too cold for you, it's too cold for the law. After all, he's only wearing woman underwear and a 15-pound overcoat. Yeah, but uh, what if one does come by? Angelo, take it from me. The law won't make it. There's too much interference on this block. First, he stops the Pacino Saloon. On a cold day, the law needs a shot. All right, big shot. Cut the palaver and give me a hand here. Mine's falling off. Come on, Joey. Yeah, OK, Monk. Myself, I'd never let anything in this neighborhood surprise me. But tell me, in the name of heaven, what are you going to do with the staircase? We're freezing, Father. Freezing we are, all of us. Oh, this is for firewood. But this is just kindling. So we use this up. So we get more. Well, what about the tenants who still live in the building? But you are destroying the landlord's property. Look, Father, this is a condemned tenement. You know what that means? Any rent the landlord gets from this trap is velvet. But you're breaking the law. Nobody's seen us. Nobody but you. Listen, boys, I've got a better way for you to keep warm. In the basement of the church, there's some gym equipment. Boxing gloves, wrestling mats, punching bag. Even shower baths. It is also steam heated. You're all welcome. So great. What about the old man, the old lady? They're freezing, too. I'm sure they'd rather stay cold than get hot digging up bail money for you, boys. Okay, Father. You make sense. We'll go over to the church. You can't talk for all the billy goats without us taking a vote on Who you. Who says I can't? Boy, settle it your own way, but do it peacefully. Remember, the invitation is for all. I know it's St. Dominic's, and this might be a chance for us to get acquainted. I'll be looking for you. Before we go, we might as well divvy up the wood we got. What goes here? A minute ago, we had a whole stack of wood. Hey, Monk, them's mine. I took them on my own time for Bichetto's market. That's what you get for holding out on us. Anybody care for some mustard? He's late again. I don't like it. I don't like my son to become bandito. Become a Gino. Maybe he's a looker for wood. Yeah. The way he's a looker for wood, he find a trouble. Where do you steal that, bandito? Paul, are you still? No. Always you think the worst of me. Someday I'm going to pay you Don't talk about it. You hit still. me once more. You'll never see me here no more. Please, sir, please. No, Mamma Mia. This was given me by the new priest at St. Dominic's. I helped him clean out the church. Vero, Paolo, Vero. See, si, Mamma Vero. Then it's all right. I had some wood. I'd give it to Angelo. He's Irish, huh? Yeah. He's a young guy. Why not stay with his own people? Little Italy is for Italians. Gino, do not speak so of a priest. He's 
to give us coal. Maybe he's to get a job for Barlow, huh? Yeah. And he's teaching me. This is a priest. Uh, what did he teach you, huh? Oh, things. He explained the good book to you. He make you say over the Ten of Commandments, huh? What's the difference? He's teaching me. It's tricky. Only because you don't know how to handle it. First, you sort of coax it. I'll never be any good at this coaxing stuff. Well, you'll have to learn. All you boys around here think fighting means killing somebody. That's right. This block you turn your head, you're just asking for it. But the science of boxing uh, will teach you that... You don't have to teach me how to fight. I can take care of myself. In street brawls. On the roof, in a dark hallway, the subway, the park, anywhere. Wherever there's three of you to one. I don't need any extra help. Good. Perhaps you'd like to prove it to me. Angelo. Yes, Father. Oh, I, I wouldn't lay a hand on no fodder. Well, I'm glad to see that you have so much respect for the cloth. But just the same, I think you're about ready for your first boxing lesson. Come on. Look, Father, I don't want to fight you. I'll, I'll hurt you or something. He'll murder sure you, will. Father. It's so hard. Let me worry about that. You just try to take care of yourself. We're trying to prove that a human being can protect himself without killing his opponent. Come on, get onto the mat and fight like a man, not an ape. Just remember, Father, you asked for it. Come on, Monk. Father, I gotta know. What did you hit me with? That, my boy, was sort of an extracurricular part of my religious training, better known as a left jab. It has a definite value convincing certain types of unbelievers. It convinced your friends, it convinced you. Will you teach me that? <laughs> Indeed I will. Sometimes in anger one forgets the Lord, but never the knack of throwing a left jab. And Paul, I called you monk to prove a point. You're going to have to live with face. I know you're sensitive about your looks, but your face is God's dispensation. And you can't escape it by brutally beating up everything in the world that looks at you or dislikes it. Yeah, I guess so, Father. It's just that I get mad any time anybody makes cracks. When I was a kid, none of the other kids would play with me. The neighbors would look at me like I had the evil eye or something. Father, I'm 19 years old, going on 20. Nobody can look at me straight. No girl even comes near me. Angelo's the only one ever really was my friend. Face and no face. Tell me, Father Callahan, don't it make you feel different to have to talk to me and look at this? No. No, I can honestly say it makes no difference. Paul, a man's face is such an external thing. Like his skin being red or brown or black or white. Like his hair being long or short. These things are the covering of a man. And after all, I'm mainly concerned with the deepest inside part of it. Many people suffer because their, their color, or their size, or their shape, or the kind of face they have is different. The most important thing to remember is this. If you hate your face because they hate it, if you call yourself ugly because some ignorant man called you ugly, you're just as guilty as he is. Guilty. You simply have no right to be so intolerant, even of yourself. Only fools would laugh at you. But you mustn't help them by losing your head. And besides, I don't think your face is so ugly as all that. 
After all, I'm no beauty myself. <laughs> and anyway, underneath it all, I think you're a pretty nice guy, Paul Baroni. And that's a lot more important than being just pretty. And if you'll drop back tomorrow, I'll show you exactly what hit you. Head would get mad at a punching bag. You gotta coax it. Stay with it, you'll catch on. Now, all you guys are gonna learn how to fight proper like. Off with the coat, Pete. You're oh, next. no, Mark. Come on, come on. Now, there'll be none of that, Pete. Father Callahan was good enough to let us use the place, so leave the stuff alone. drop your guard just because I faint. Try it again. Yeah, but suppose I drop a milk bottle on you from the roof. What good's this? We'll see. Now, you see, sometimes there's no milk bottle handy. A left jab is your best friend. Yeah. And this is our gym, Miss Brooks. Perhaps in time, we can use it as a recreation hall. It's large enough. Of course, you'll have to get some games and some new equipment. You mean some new patrons. Boys, this is Miss Brooks, who's coming down evenings to work with our social program. Hi. Hello. Paul, will you come here a minute? I particularly want to introduce you to Paul Baroni. He's going to help me with our physical culture program. Oh. Pleased to meet you. Thank you. I guess you and I will be working together. Well, I... I guess so. <laughs> well, you couldn't do that last month. That's right, Father. What's that for? That's for calling me Father. Paul, we've talked about this before. You read the books I give you without any trouble. But you still persist in talking East 106th Street. I know it's part of your mechanism of being tough, but with my own ears, I have heard you pronounce words like a human being. Well, the hymns and prayers is different. They're all printed in English. And if you can say father in church, you can pronounce it correctly elsewhere. Okay. Father. Now we can get down to business. Tell me what's eating you. Don't try to kid me. You've been fiddling around here for the last half hour, talking about this and that. Let's stop beating around the bush and get to it. Okay, Father. I'll give it to you straight. I've been watching the services. You know, listening and everything. Like I told you, it gets me. Especially the singing. Father... If you think I could, I'd like to try and sing in the choir. <laughs> of course, Paul, of course. I wasn't laughing at you, but I am impressed by your courage. Yes, your courage. And you certainly shall get a chance to sing in the choir. Providing, of course, you can sing. Come on, we'll have the choir master try your voice now. Hello, Mama. Ah, I see Father Callahan teach you again today, huh? <laughs> no, Mama. Today I study singing. You cut your face with a high C? No, no. The choir master says I got a voice. Kind of rough, he says, but a baritone. And they need a baritone. You see, Mama, most of the kids are 11, 12 years old. All they got is, is sopranos or altos. Me? Me, I'm a man. I got a man's voice. And tomorrow, Mama, for the first time, I get to sing with the regular choir in church at services. Oh, no, that's the <laughs> good. That's the good part. <laughs> Marty. Hey, what are you 
drink, Tony. Is it a dame? Or maybe it's just Vada Callahan stooge. Why don't you guys beat it? This is no place for a beef. <laughs> Ain't he pretty? Where'd you get the skirts, Monk? We don't want a beef. We would like a dance. How about a date, Monk? Where's your organ grinder, Monk? You got the face and the skirts for it. All you need now is a tin cup. Monk! Get your lace patties, Doity. <laughs> What's the matter, Angie? You losing your knife? Listen, you guys. Monk ain't done nothing to nobody. What do you mean he ain't done nothing? He quit, didn't he? You know we got a rule. Nobody quits the goats. Nothing gets away with it. Huh, fellas? That's yeah, right. That's right. Now look at him. Callahan sissy. And we let him push us around. Tough guy. Monk Baroni. Look at him. Come on, fellas. Let's get him. Get him. Oh! I didn't mean it. It was an accident. Help! Murder! Help! Police! Get going, Monk. You gotta get out of here. But it was an accident. Look, Monk, you ain't no kid. Nobody's gonna believe it was any accident. The cops still remember you. Father Callahan ain't gonna be here to put in a good word for you. Monk, you gotta get out of here to the courtyard. Hide there. I'll come later tonight now. Get going! Stay away off the block. You can't go home. The only guy ever did me a good turn, and I sent him to the hospital. This kiss of mine. This ape's face. Monk. Monk Baroni. It's a curse. It's a curse from God. It's bad luck for everybody I know. Shh, Monk, hold it down. You gotta get a hold of yourself. We gotta figure what you're gonna do. With this face and these fists, what can I do? for a winner to help carry his defeated opponent to a corner. The defeated opponent can lay there for all I care. They're booing me, not him. What kind of watch they give us this time? Same kind. Imitation gold. When are we gonna finish with this imitation and get into the real stuff? Soon, I hope. Well... It's good for four bucks. So you and me split a steak, and then we split a pool table. Someday we get twin beds. Give us. The other guy's silly, you bust a knuckle. All you get is a gold watch. All these watches ticking away in my safe, they're driving me crazy. Even if I can't hear them, they, they, they keep me awake. Ah, uh, here you are. There's one, two, three, four. And don't bring 
bring me any more watches. We can't eat the springs. Well, then why don't you get wise to yourself? Come here, kid. You know, you must have dynamite in those fists. This is the sixth watch they've given you in three weeks, isn't it? Mostly one-round chaos. Well, then why don't you get wise and become a pro? That's easy to say, but how? The gyms are crawling with Golden Glovers. We don't know anybody on the west side. Who do you see? Who do you talk to? All right, so listen and I'll tell you. Now you go up to Griffin's private gym, 10th Avenue and 48th Street. Walk up one flight. Yeah, there's a saloon. Say, uh, Bud, who is this Mr. Hellman? That's him over there with the glasses. He's reading. Yeah, he's always reading. Could we talk to you, Mr. Hellman? Well, that would depend, I should say, on your range of conversation. What would you like to discuss? Somebody told us to ask for you. How cozy. But we're not supposed to say who. Well, if you tell me who, I might listen. That's the first trait I like to find in a fighter is treachery. The ability to betray a confidence. Look, Mr. Hellman, we ain't good at this double talk, but um, my buddy here's got the makings of a good fighter. Why come to me? I'm a manager. I'm not a trainer. Because Uncle won't take any more imitation gold watches. You do much fighting? Six amateurs, one all six by knockouts. Look, I hate bragging. Just breathe easy, boy. Don't throw your chest out. What's your name? Young Baroni. Yeah. Oh, 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 I bet that's a lie. Why, even those penny ante fans support those stupid amateurs wouldn't stand still for that physiognomy of yours going under that banner. <laughs> Young. Oh, oh. Well, you're old, boy. Your face is old. It's, it's atavistic. It's almost prehistoric. Come on, give me the truth. What name do you fight under? Ape Baroni or Gorilla Baroni? It's Monk. Yeah, Monk! You know you mustn't hit a man with glasses. And don't needle my buddy. We slept on a pool table. We had a drinker and a cup of coffee for breakfast. And teach him to control himself. Then talk to us like human beings. Why? Look, I hate to teach anybody anything, but there's one lesson that I'll teach you. Never lose your temper except in the ring. To most fighters, I say never lose your temper, especially in the ring, but you... If you ever fight for me, that's where I want you to lose it. I want you to snarl, spit, show your fangs. I want a real primitive show, uh, Monk Baroni. Okay, okay. Would you like to see him box? Well, you said he won his first six by knockouts. Let's see here. Yeah. Here we are. Young Baroni, four knockouts, two technical knockouts. Young Baroni. Well, what do you know? You boys must be new to the fight game. You're honest. You mean you got a record on Monk? Why, certainly. I took the word of every would-be pug that comes in here. I'd be spending 24 hours a day listening to stumble bums. Look. Here's 20 bucks to get yourself a room at the Y and supervise his training. See if he runs around the reservoir, does plenty of gym work. Keep him in shape. But don't overfeed him. I want him hungry. And sign this receipt. Because one way or another, I expect to get my money back. Then you're his manager. I'm his manager. How soon you want to see him? Keep him out of my sight. But you come back here in about a week, and I'll sign him up for a four-round prelim out at the Staten Island Arena. At least I'll enjoy the ferry ride.
Mr. Baroni. Your record from Italy came in this morning. Would you like to hear it? I sure would. All right, right over here. talk to me? I shouldn't for the length of time you stayed away. Then you're not, you're not sore at me? Not sore? Come now, Paul. Even a priest is human. When the side of my head caved in, I could have throttled you. Honest, I didn't mean it. My head was full of stone. I couldn't see who it was. I, I was so mad. Crazy mad. That scratch yield in due time. But what I am angry about is the fact that you stayed away so long. I was ashamed. I did get your conscience money for the uh, choir boy's clothes. In fact, I was able to get six complete outfits. That helps. I saw Angelo slipping the money in the poor box. He wasn't very clever about sneaking it in. I saw him, but I wouldn't go near him. I wanted you to come forward, not your stooge. I... I just didn't have the nerve. It's all wiped out. Thanks. I see you're still interested in church music. You got the goods on me. Yes, and I intend to club you with it. Paul, I'm going to send off a letter to every sports writer in New York. I can see the headlines now. Welterweight trains on Gregorian chance. Yes, I'm going to resort to blackmail if you don't come up and see us. You mean I can? I mean you must. Why, you ungrateful wretch. Who do you think taught you how to throw a left jab? Every time I connect with it, I say, here's a message from Father Callahan. And you've been connecting off? I've been reading about you. Well, here are your orders. This very Saturday night, in the gym where you first learned to coax a punching bag, we're having a dance for the Friends of St. Dominic. A dance? Oh, yes, we've made a lot of progress. You haven't seen the place in over a year. You'll be delighted. I'll come. That'll cost you two bits. <laughs> I'll pay at the door. Bring a girl. Ain't got one. Well, uh, who's your manager? Four-Eyed Buzzard, name of Mr. Hellman. Bring him. He's my manager. Not my friend. I found out one thing. In this racket, you got no friends. That's why, when I'm alone, I'm glad I can listen to a little church music. I'm proud of you, Paul. You've grown. You've matured. You've got values. You'll be all right. I still get my block knocked off. You'll be all right. If not as a fighter, as a man. You know, you're somewhat of a celebrity up on East 106th Street. We'll all be glad to see you. Saturday. Okay. Fodder. <laughs> Fine, Father. It's good to be back. The place looks great. Oh, this is just a start. Someday, perhaps, we'll have a recreation hall big enough for everyone in the community. How are the kids taken to it? That's where the real progress lies. Kindness can perform miracles. You're telling me. Well, make yourself at home, boys. There's plenty of sandwiches and cookies and fruit and... Well, I'm afraid you're a little late. Uh, there was plenty of refreshment there a minute ago. Excuse me. Hi, Pete. It's been a long time. Hi, Monk. Just a second, Pete.
things don't change much, do they, Pete? A nice bump in any of you, Pete. <laughs> I still have a ways to go with him. Did you hear about him burning his coat? Say, I did notice his coat had a small patch on it. That's it. As near as I can understand it, uh, Pete was borrowing one of the candle holders from the altar when someone came in the door. Now, this caught Pete by surprise, so he put the holder inside of his coat while the candle was still burning. <laughs> well, this sounds like a happy group. Boys, you remember Miss Brooks. Hi. Hi. Oh. You're a little late. We were supposed to work together here at St. Dominic's, remember? I took a holiday. Dad? Oh, thanks, but uh, Father Callahan and Angelo and I, we... we I'm just... leaving. I've already left. Looks like your um, excuses have run out on you. Your light on your feet. It must be the road work I do. Once around the reservoir every morning. That accounts for endurance, but not for a sense of rhythm. Then it, it must be punching the bag. But you're not dancing on your hands. Well, then it's skipping rope. Will you quit shadow boxing? You're just naturally graceful and don't be ashamed of it. It's much better than being awkward. I can tell a born dancer. You coordinate. Oh, that's what I do. And don't pretend you don't understand. Father Callahan said you know much longer words than you use, and you can pronounce all of them correctly. He also said you're a secret reader, the way some people nip on the sly. <laughs> okay, Miss Brooks. You got the goods on me. I'll go quiet. I call you Paul. Then to you I'll speak different. Paul? Yeah. Can I see you fight sometime? No, ma'am, never. You asked me, Emily, so I told you. Well, you didn't have to answer with your left jab. I'm sorry. But if you saw me in the ring, a girl like you wouldn't go for that sort of business. It's no good. You can do better than that. That's right, you do enjoy good music. That Father Callahan's been talking again. It's no crime to enjoy fine music, Paul. It's the key to a number of good pleasures. After that, you enjoy good books, good food, good conversation, good people, and good relationships. Like the ones I haven't known. Emily. Don't tell me a pretty girl like you doesn't have plenty of boyfriends. If you're trying to find out if I've been sitting around waiting for you, well, I'll have to admit I do go out on other dates. You may get the chance to see me fight yet. <laughs> See if I win you. Didn't you know? Dice are always loaded in my favor. Two pair. Three of a kind. Guess I don't make the grade tonight. Not with this hand. So long, champ.
mentioned it, but never said when. Right now, since we're alone, I'll get right down to the point. Monk, I bring you good tidings. The uh, mysteriosos of Cauliflower Alley, those slick, soft-spoken gentlemen that they referred to as the syndicate, are interested in you. What does that make me? Well, it makes you a candidate for big purses. How big? Depends on how well you draw, but you ought to draw well because you're in for a big publicity buildup. Look, Monk, you're gonna fight main events in cities where normally they use club fighters like you for curtain raisers, and pretty soon the garden. So if you live sensibly, which you won't, and stay away from fascinating dames, which you probably can't, you'll have some money left to live on after you're punched silly. Where does this switch leave you? Me? Oh, I'm still your manager. I take a smaller cut, but then it's a bigger pie. And fronting for the syndicate, make certain the pie is on the table. Mr. Hellman, I can see you put up a big battle before you haul it, Mama. Monk, I leave the heroics to my fighters. They're better equipped for it. I didn't come into this game to go out with any medals. I was attracted to the cash. No reporter will ever quote me as saying I did it for the good of the game or because I enjoyed the companionship of punch-drunk gargoyles. I'd like to take one good swing at you. Obviously. But you won't change my way of thinking. Monk, I'll tell you something. I may be selfish, but I'm honest and I call all the cards even when they're marked. I don't like you. I don't understand you. Keep it that way. You'll be better off. Okay. What do we do about this syndicate? We see them. When? Right now. And Monk, one word of advice. Don't act conceited with these gentlemen. They don't want you because you're a great fighter. And why tag me? I told you they're smart. They, they balance the fighters they control. They never match similar boys. That would be boring. The public wants variety. The clever counterpuncher against the slugger. The hell's kitchen lowbrow against the college waltzer. Variety. Dream pusses, angel faces, gentlemen boxers, killers. What am I supposed to be? <clears throat> well, they didn't tell me, but I understand what they need is a real dirty fighter. How'd you get that? I was fighting Pretty Boy Jones in New Haven. He wasn't pretty when they carried him out. Well, give me the lowdown. How? Well, Monk, before we tag anyone, we have the boy watched carefully. You were scouted. Then one of our men took these pictures with a hidden camera. We've had them blown up and slowed down for your benefit and guidance. Well, what do you know? You watched the round? You saw the winner. I sure did. Don't forget him, Monk Maroney. That's the fighter we buy. And from here in, that's the way you fight. Hey, Monk. Monk, come here a minute, will you? We're fighting Sailor Judson in Newark next week. How does he look? How's you know, that's a funny thing. You never ask me, can he punch? Is he fast? What's his reach? Is he strong? It's always, how does he look? That's all I'm interested in. Well, I'll tell you, the, the sailor's a good-looking, clean-cut blonde boy. Well, fix that. You hate every man you fight, don't you? Just evening up a score. That's all. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event. In the black corner, wearing purple trunks, weighing in at 167 pounds, Monk Veroni. <laughs> and here in the white corner, wearing gold trunks, at 170 pounds, Sailor Judson. Now, you boys both know the rules laid down by the Athletic Commission. I want a nice, clean fight. And if a fighter gets knocked down, I want the other fighter to go to the farthest neutral corner. Now, shake hands and come out fighting. Now,
How was this trip, Paul? Just one fight after another. You want the sum total. 30 stitches, one busted knuckle, two loose teeth, maybe half a pint of blood. Money, too. Angelo banks it. <laughs> By the time I look like a real ape, I'll have a bankroll. I don't know if my buildup is good, but it sure is fast. Fans are paying more and more to see me get slugged. Hurt much? Sure it hurts. That's my job, to get hurt. People pay good money to see me get hurt. Maybe get killed. But don't feel sorry for me, Emily. I like this plaster, the patches and the cuts. They help hide my face. Yeah. On me, it looks good. I'm glad I can wear them when I have to meet you. have to wear a mask with me, Paul. I know, but it makes it easier. You hate what you're doing. I do. It's not even fighting it. It's throwing a gorilla into the ring to put on a slaughter fest. But you really want to be a fighter? What else could I do with this? You could change your face. What? Yes. Since it's your face that stands between you and, and yourself, your real self, change it. How? Plastic surgery. Think of the miracles they did during the war, Paul. Your face would be easy for them. But if I, if I change my face, I have to give up fighting. You'll be giving up what you hate. But I've come quite a ways in the boxing game. You still despise it. It's money. When you never had it before in your life, you just don't go tossing it over. But, but what good is it when you're miserable, hating and bitter? You know, Paul, you blame every misfortune you've ever had on just one thing. But that one thing is now starting to pay off for me. But in what way? Sure, you're living better, but, but that anger and resentment is still there, maybe even more so. How will I make a living? We'll work that out. We? Yes, we. You and me. Paul, when you discard that mask, you'll, you'll finally be at, at peace with yourself. Then the world will see the real wonderful You tell me what to do. Hiya, Pete. Well, this certainly is an unexpected pleasure. Here, Monk. Thanks, Pete. But the operation was a success. This is a funeral wreath. I know, but when I was shopping around, that's all I could find. Uh, thanks again, Pete. But you shouldn't have done it. Say, Father, have you seen Emily? I certainly have, and I'm very glad to hear about you two. She's a fine girl. Her family, they live in Buffalo. They wrote to me inquiring about you. I'm afraid I simply had to tell them the truth. After all, if it wasn't for me, you'd have never known the difference between a right hook and a left jab. <laughs> One thing about Emily, she's I guess you guys have a lot to talk over. I'm shoving. Thanks for everything, Pete. It certainly was considerate of you to take time off and come up and see an old buddy. So long, Pete. Bye. <laughs> I guess I better be running along, too. How's the gym coming? Fine. More kids coming in every day. Say, Father, in my condition, I can't handle any candy. Why don't you take the box of chocolates along with you? 
for the gang at the church. Well, it's a good idea. I'm sure they'd appreciate <laughs> Hi. Hi, you handsome. Hey. Who punched you, pretty? You like? Mm-hmm. Whoever did it sure had the touch. No beef from me. One roll to see if I win you. I'm tough to beat, but it doesn't mean I'm invincible. Invincible. Now, what does that mean? You just found out. Now, what would I do with a fistful of cigars? What else would you like? A box of candy? Package of playing cards? A ball pen? Well, tell me. What else would you like? Punching the bag, skipping rope. All that makes me light on my feet. No kidding, good luck. You dance as if you were in another world. Maybe that's it. Here it is. I guess I can let myself in. I said myself. Can't I smoke a last cigarette? Okay. The rubber mat says welcome, but don't let it fool you. Say, this is all right. want service. Maybe I rate it. Monk, let's get one thing straight. Every Joe that buys a cigar from me or rattles the dice in the cup thinks a date goes with it. Well, I don't. Took me a long time. And a new face. So I went out with you. The date ends on the other side of the door. I don't feel like leaving. Please, I'm a working girl. I need sleep, rest. To hold my job, to make it pay off, I have to be attractive. You mean all this? And the clothes you wear? You win all that across the counter. I can't stop some of my dates from buying me small presents. Like that off-the-shoulder gown we saw tonight in Bergdorf's window. You got it, baby. I guess maybe you can smoke that last cigarette. Angelo, go down to the bank and bring back some scratch, huh? Like how much? Two or three C's. I don't think you've got that much. What do you mean? The way you've been throwing your dough around, you're nearly all tapped out. <laughs> you're crazy. Since you've been hanging around with June, here's the tab. One evening gone, 250. One stole, 600. Half a dozen pair of shoesies, 180. Assorted costume jewelry, 200. Sundry items, 580. Everything's going out. Nothing's coming in. 
Everything for June, nothing for Emily, not even time. Why don't you mind your own business? Okay. Okay. Where are you going now? I'm gonna take five bucks to your mom, and then I'm gonna go look for a job. You haven't said much. I've been watching you watch yourself. I guess the mirror no longer scares you. Not a bit. In fact, it fascinates you like hypnotism. Can't a guy look at himself? Not long enough to pass out into a dream world. What's come over you, Paul? It's been three weeks since I've seen you, and when you do show up, you're late. You're rude. I like the old Paul better. Well, I don't. You proved you don't. We were supposed to make plans, talk about our future. Give me a little time, Emily. I'll get over this. I don't think so, Paul. I watched you in the hotel lobby, on the street, and we walked. In the restaurant. You've got no thoughts for anyone but yourself. And the way you beg for admiration from the girls. Well, I never had any. Well, from what I hear, you're making up for lost time. Emily, nothing has changed between us. I don't know. Well, I'll prove it to you. You still think I look like a... Paul, how could you? Do you think this new face matters to me? Well, you act like it. I don't like you. I don't understand you. Because I'm like any other guy with his girl. Leave me alone. Emily! No, Mark. Can I smoke a last cigarette? I told you, I want to go to sleep. Came over you all of a sudden, huh? Look, Mark, I don't care for hallway scenes, so I'll make this short. Let's say good night and goodbye. Why? You're in way over your head. You can't afford to go out with me. I like nice things, but I don't want them out of your eating, Mark. I can get more. I want no part of trouble. Why, you even owe the hotel last month's rent. Ah, uh, that's nothing. Look, Buster. I'm not your bookkeeper. All I'm trying to tell you is that this round's over. We had some fun. I let you break in your new face. And this is it. So it's a brush, huh? To go out with you just doesn't make sense. And if anything, I'm a sensible girl. You might as well take in your welcome mat. What do you want here? I was worried about you. You ran out of me once? Leave it that way. Paul, I want to talk to you. I may be going away. This is no place to talk. Besides, there's nothing to say. Emily's going away to teach. Fine, pal. All you think of is ways to trip me up. Why don't you just butt out of my business? Don't pick on Angelo. I asked him to bring me here. Sure. And he was glad to. Anything to prove I'm a no-good guy. You're all right people, now that I'm broke. You know that doesn't matter to me. We talked about it just before your operation. We were supposed to plan our future together. You... You promised we'd work it out. Well, it worked out fine. I got a new face, no friends, and I'm broke. 
Don't be family. She didn't blow your bank. I roll. told you to butt out of this. Get out. Get out, both of you. I don't want to be needled. Get out. I'll take you home. Goodbye, Paul. Say, where's the clerk? You're out of bounds, brother. This isn't the Waldorf. You don't happen to know a monk Baroni, do you? I did know a monk Baroni. Know where I could find him? You're too far uptown. Why don't you try one of those flea traps on the west side of the tracks? All right, I will. Thanks. find me. That was easy. I just followed a trail of unpaid bills. And those fascinating dames that I was telling you about have begun to cross you up. What do you want? Look, you've been avoiding me. What for? I know it isn't your conscience. I don't want to see anybody. Well, I'm going to see you. Well, well, that's pretty. Save the cracks. I had a little accident. That's why you didn't hear from me. When the medic patched me up, you made a few changes. A few changes? <laughs> I'd say that was the understatement of the season. Well, I vote for it. I don't, Monk. For me, the old face was better. Certainly a lot better for fighting. Maybe I ain't fighting anymore. But give up the ring just when you're ready for the big purses? Monk, when that doctor fixed your face, he certainly didn't help your brain much. I'm giving it up. I'm gonna retire. Retire on what? Your clippings? Look, Monk, you're just hurting yourself, not us. If the cab loses a fender, the taxi company doesn't go out of business, does it? And for me and my associates? Fighting is business. Business that goes on and on. So I quit. No fighter ever quits, Monk. Once you lace on a pair of those gloves, you make a lifelong marriage. You never get away from it. When you leave the stadium at night after a fight, who sells you the morning papers? A blind ex-pug. You'll never get away from it. And you're broke now, Monk. So I know you'll come running back to me. My advice is to make it soon. My uh, associates haven't got too much patience. They may find themselves another dirty fighter. Come on, champ. Make it short and sweet. Remember, this is your first comeback fight. Those sports writers out there want plenty of action. Give it to them. Semi wind ups on your next. Keep all your punches in fair territory and break clean when I tell you. Shake hands now and come out fighting at the bell.
thought he was easy to hit. Always was. Looks like he switched his style. Sure did. So box him. So we both box. Where's the action? You want a little softer music this round? All right, you proved you can dance. Now fight. Tiger wind up with a pussycat. From here on in, that's the way I'm fighting. Oh, no, it's not. Not for us or anybody else. I don't need you to play patty cake. If I want this kind of a bout, I can get a better one right out of an old maid's home. Angelo. Let me lug this. I watched you go the distance tonight. And the way you fought, you ain't strong enough to carry this gear. I keep my face in. The crowd gets their money's worth booing me. Your face looks all right. Maybe a little on the sad side. Have you seen Emily? Like I told you, she left town to teach you. Have you seen Father Kelly? He'd only ask me about you. What I could tell him, he reads in the sports column. Come on, Angelo. We split a steak, then we split a pool table. I say get rid of him. We lost 10 G's on him last night. My advice is to wait. This boy's in love with his new face. Then cut it up 10 G's worth and dump him. I still say wait. For what? For a killing, that's for what? What are you driving at? This kid wants to be a cover boy, not a champ. Now, you got him pegged wrong. He's good for a killing. When? Look. Let him fight four or five times as a defensive boxer. He'll lose every bout. He'll be out, boxed out, classed, but he'll go from an odds-on favorite to a long shot. The odds will get better and better for us. If there's a payoff. There will be once he goes back to his old style of fighting. My one big bout with him as a killer, we're bound to clean up. Say, that's not bad. Not bad at all. How are you gonna make him fight his old way, even once? I'll find a way. Well, we'll ride with you. But you're carrying the load from here in. I'll have it. There'd better be a payoff. OK, teacher. You don't have to draw us a diagram. We take your word for it. But just to keep it friendly, you're going to chip in with us. Doug and I are putting up 10 grand apiece, and you're going to put up 5 grand. Me? 5,000? Why not? You're really sold on this operation, you can scrape it up. With Monk going into that fight at odds of seven to two, you shouldn't even stop to think it over. All right, count me in. Let me tell you one thing, teacher. If something goes wrong, better buy yourself a new blackboard. striving for. They've got big plans, Mike. Plans to help every kid in this neighborhood. Okay. I'll chip in, but I don't want her in to Father 
Callahan. He won't. He's out trying to raise money. And so is Emily. Who told you about Emily? Not for what I'm going to ask you to do, I had to know everything about you. Everything. What do you want? Look, you've heard me pop off about the big shots and heroes before. You know they don't impress me. So what I'm telling you must come from my heart. Believe me, Monk, you've got a chance to be a big man now. Big where it counts. Big in the eyes of Father Callahan and Emily. What do I have to do? Give them that recreation hall they're campaigning so hard for. They've got their hearts set on it, but they'll never get it with pennies and nickels and dimes. You can give it to them on a silver platter. How? By fighting the Seattle Wildcat the way I took it. You know how I've been fighting. Yeah, I know, but that's got to change. Look, win this fight, and the whole purse goes to St. Dominic's RN, too. This is a fair deal. I wouldn't lie to you, you know that. Not here. You fight and I manage. This is for a good cause. Where do you and the Syndicate come in? At the odds you'll be fighting at, uh, we'll do very well with side bets. I really think this will square me. With Father Callahan and with Emily. I know it will. Why, this is bigger than penance. It's, it's even bigger than lip service. You're saying you're sorry in the only way that counts. I'll vouch for it, Monk. You fight my way, and you'll be okay with the father and Emily. Now, what do you say? Sure everything is okay? You got the money spread out. Yes, I'm sure. Besides, you've got me for a deposit. Maybe you ought to give him some final instructions. Yeah, well, that kid hates me. I just irritate him. Anyhow, Angelo handles them better. You're up next. Tell 
He can't take it anymore. He hits like a bull. Yeah, but every time you nick him in the puss, he's hurt double. Keep after his face. Sunday punch, we lose 20 G's. He will. You don't know how much that kid wants to square himself. A knockout will do it. philosophizing. Remember what I told you about finding yourself a new blackboard if something went wrong? Something went wrong. Hello, Father. its own victories. Look at the wounds on your face. Don't say you lost. Hello, Paul. Paul, we'll take you home when you're ready. I've heard rumors that the big gamblers lost money betting on you. Well, you fought your fight. And if need be, there's a few good, fast rounds left in me. And a hard left jab. Just a reminder that our recreation hall opens on the 10th of next month. It is yours, young and old alike. Come and enjoy it. And it is to one of our own sons, a boy from this very street, to whom we all owe so much for making this recreational center possible so soon, Paul Baroni. And I am very happy to announce that he and his lovely bride, Emily, will be working with us when they return. Working with us to make this a better street a better church, and a better community in which to live. 